Hello friends. Um, I'm gonna keep reading from The Night at Dawn by Mary Pope Osborne. Um, let me know who's who's listening and um, if there are any books that you want me to read, um, go ahead and mention that and I will try and get to the library and go get some of those. Uh, I'm gonna keep going um, with chapter four, Into the Castle. So Jack and Annie were transported to uh, medieval times and they are learning what's going on in the castle and what a moat is and right now they're going to see um, kind of a big celebration that Annie snuck off. So Jack says, I'm gonna kill her, Jack muttered. He threw his stuff into his pack and he moved towards the drawbridge. He hoped no one would see him. It was getting darker, it must be night. When he got to the bridge, he started across. The wooden planks creaked under his feet. He peered over the edge of the bridge. Um, were there crocodiles in that moat? He couldn't tell. Halt, someone shouted. A guard at the top of the castle wall was looking down. Jack dashed across the bridge and he ran through the castle gate and into the courtyard. From inside the castle came sounds of music, shouting, and laughter. Jack hurried into a dark corner and crouched down. He shivered as he looked for Annie. Torches lit the high, hall, the high wall around the courtyard. The courtyard was nearly empty. Two boys led horses that clomped over the gray cobblestones. Nay, Jack turned. It was the knight's black horse. Psst! He peered into the darkness. It was Annie. She was hiding behind the wall in the center of the courtyard. She waved at him. Jack waved back. He waited until the boys and the horses disappeared inside the stable. Then he dashed to the well. I'm going to find the music, whispered Annie. Are you coming? Okay, said Jack with a sigh. They tiptoed across the cobblestones. Then they slipped into the entrance of the castle. Noise and music came from the bright room in front of them. They stood on one side of the doorway and peeked in. The feast in the great hall, whispered Jack. He held his breath and stared in awe. A giant fireplace blazed at the end of the noisy room. Antlers and rugs hung on the stone walls. Flowers covered the floor. Boys in short dresses carried trays of food. Dogs were fighting over the bones under the table. People in bright clothes and funny hats strolled among the crowd. They played, they played funny shaped guitars. Some tossed balls into the air and some balanced swords on their hands. Men and women dressed in capes and furs sat, and, sat at long wooden tables. I wonder which one is the knight, asked Jack. I don't know, whispered Annie, but they're eating with their fingers. Suddenly, someone was shouting from behind them. Jack whirled around. A man carrying a, pie, a tray of pies was standing 10 feet away. Who art thou? He said angrily. J Jack, squeaked Jack. Annie, squeaked Annie. Then they turned and ran as fast as they could into a dimly lit hallway. So look where they are. So this guy's coming with the pies. And here's Jack and Annie, and they took off running that way when they got when they were seen. What do you think's gonna happen? Oh, this is chapter five. That was a short chapter. I'm gonna keep reading. This is called Trapped. Come on, cried Annie. Jack raced behind her. Um, were they being followed? Here, quick! Annie dashed towards a door off the hallway. She pushed the door open, and the two of them stumbled into the to a dark, cold room. The door creaked shut behind them. Give me the flashlight, said Annie. Jack handed it to her and she switched it on. Yikes, there were rows of knights right in front of them. Look at where they found. It looks like this is where they store all the armor. They have no heads. Annie flicked off the light. Silence, they weren't moving. They aren't moving, Jack whispered. Annie turned the light back on. They're just suits, Jack said, without heads. Let me have the flashlight a second, said Jack, so, so I can look at the book. Annie handed him the flashlight and he pulled, he pulled out the castle book. He flipped through the pages until he found what he was looking for. He put the book away. It's called an armory, he said. It's where the armor and the weapons are stored. Uh, he shone the flashlight across the room. 
Oh man, whispered Jack. The light fell on a shiny breastplate, leg plates and arm plates, on sleeves filled with helmets and weapons, on shields and spears and swords and crossbows and clubs and battle axes. There was a noise in the hall. Voices, let's hide, said Annie. Wait, said Jack. I got to check on something first. Hurry, said Annie. It'll just take a second, said Jack. Hold on to this. And she handed, he handed Annie the flashlight. He turned to lift the helmet from the shelf. It was too heavy. He bent over and dragged the helmet over his head. Uh, the visor slammed shut. Oh, forget it. It was worse than having a five-year-old on your head. More like having a 10-year-old on your head. Uh, not only could Jack not lift his head, he couldn't see anything either. Jack, Annie whispered, um, and she sounded far away. The voices are getting closer. Turn off your flashlight. Jack's voice echoed inside the metal chamber. He struggled to get the helmet off. Suddenly, he lost his balance and went crashing into a piece of armor. The metal plates and weapons clattered to the floor. They're not being very quiet, are they? Man, all that noise, somebody's going to find him in there. Jack lay on the floor in the dark. He tried to get up, but his head was too heavy. He heard deep voices. Someone grabbed him by the arm. The next thing he knew, his helmet was yanked off. He was staring into the blazing light of a fiery torch. See, he got caught. All right, that's the end of the chapter. Um, I will finish it in the next section. Bye.